My name is Brian Barczyk. I've been working with exotic animals for over 25 years. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be in search of the death adder. The death adder is one of the top 10 most deadly snakes on the planet. It has always been one of my dreams to see one in the wild. We're in New South Wales in the subtropical rainforest, right where they belong. Now you're gonna find these guys in leaf litter just like we see here. Might be a long shot, but I've been told that they're just all over the place. Let's see if we can find one. What's the number one cause for the reduction of the population of death adders? A, residential development, B, global warming, or C, the cane toad? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the right answer. For this week's Reptile Report, we'll be highlighting ballpythons.net. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. The adventure begins, and with this thick brush, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, but this forest is teeming with life. I tell you, searching for death adders is certainly a lesson in patience, I can tell you that much. There's not, holy crap, hang on, come here guys, come here. Oh my gosh, now this is definitely something I was not expecting to find here. Now the sun's been kind of beating through the the hole in the canopy here and it's just sunning. Of course, this is a diamond python. Let's see, looks a little bit tenacious. But we're gonna see how it goes. Oh yeah, look at this beauty here. Now diamond pythons have always been one of my favorite of the Morelia complex. And of course, these are Morelia spilodes and they only range right in the southeastern part of Australia on the coastal ranges, typically higher up in the elevations. They actually prefer it much cooler than most pythons. They're actually the southernmost found python in the entire world, believe it or not. Now, most people that are breeding these successfully in captivity are keeping them extremely cool during the breeding season. And of course, they're called diamond pythons because of these diamond shapes in their patterning here. They're also very dark, which is really the reason why they can thermoregulate a lot. They get into the sun just like this little guy was doing right now and they heat up and then they crawl off into the brush at night. Again, there's been records of these guys getting into the 30s Fahrenheit and still thriving. Wow, what a gorgeous find this guy is. Now breeding them, they'll typically have 18 to 20 eggs, but I've actually heard of litters in the 40s, believe it or not. I've always wanted to own one of these little guys and to see one in the wild has been such a treat but I'm not gonna molest it too much more. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on its way and just see how it crawls away. Go ahead, little bugger. Wow, what a gorgeous snake. You can certainly see how arboreal they are. The first thing it does is just start to climb up. As much as I love catching snakes, I always love seeing them crawl back into the wild. There's something satisfying about setting a snake free. Diamond pythons are great climbers, as you can see here. They use their muscles in an undulating pattern to inch their way up the tree. It's so impressive to see an animal without arms climb so effortlessly. Ah, oh, take a look at this. This is an awesome find. This is what they call a blind snake, and they're endemic to all parts of Australia. Now, these guys are gonna typically feed on ant and termite larvae, and they're known for having a really intense anal scent gland. I can tell you what, guys, this guy is a stinky little bugger for sure, but he is so cute. It almost looks like a worm, but you can see that little tongue flickering. Wow, that's cute. We're gonna go ahead and put him back underneath this log, let him go on his way. Take a look at this, guys. 
Now this is the one elapid snake that you really don't have to worry about handling. It is front fang venomous, but there's never been an envenomation ever of this guy. It's called a golden crown snake. Now they range anywhere from central New South Wales all the way up into southern Queensland. They only get about 20 to 24 inches. And again, it's pretty cool to be able to handle an elapid and not have to worry about getting bitten. These guys feed primarily on lizards and will have eggs anywhere from two to seven in a clutch. They're primarily nocturnal and they are just so gorgeous. You can certainly see where the name Golden Crown came from. We're gonna go ahead and let this little guy go back into the wild. Go on your way, little buddy. What we have here is a red belly black snake. Now these guys are an elapid, and although they're not a deadly elapid, you certainly don't want to get bit by one of these guys. They have a myotoxin, which means it's going to be a really painful bite with some necrosis. But typically, from an elapid standpoint, they're one of the easier animals to handle and aren't nearly as aggressive as, say, a taipan. Now these guys are endemic to southeastern Australia all the way up into Queensland. They're gonna basically be anywhere where water is. And again, they're a relatively common animal. They're gonna eat lizards, frogs, and even known to sometimes eat other snakes. Now they're live bears, and as a matter of fact, looks like this is a female, it may actually be gravid. It's definitely a very iconic snake for Australia. And this one's starting to get a little bit aggressive. So we're gonna go ahead and let this little bugger go, all right? Red belly black snakes are lightning quick. As you can see here, it wasted no time getting away. We've been searching for a good three hours already. The problem really is, is that these guys are so camouflage that looking through this leaf litter, we could have walked by 10 of them already within a few inches of them and still missed them. But we still have a few hours of daylight left, so. I'm not going to give up. Typically, right about the time you're about to give up, that's when you're going to find something. Brian Sting! Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. We finally found it, guys. All right, guys, this is it. The Death Adder, the animal we've been searching for all afternoon. And I tell you what, just looking at this animal, you can certainly tell how camouflaged they actually are. And that's their whole gig. They're just gonna lay in the leaf litter and wait for an ambush. And what's really interesting is you can see that tail right there. They use it as a lure. They'll just stick it up in the air and waggle it and wait for a lizard or a frog to come along. And as soon as it comes up and takes a nibble, wham, it's gonna hit it. Now this guy's venom. It's pretty nasty. It's a neurotoxin. And if you get bit by something like this, it's gonna cause paralysis and eventually respiratory failure. Before antivenom, these guys would bite you. You would have a 50-50 chance of survival. Fortunately now, if you get treatment, you might be okay, but trust me, I don't want to be on the biting end of this guy. They'll eventually max out up to three foot, but more commonly, they're gonna stay around two foot, and they're live bearers, having up to 20 babies. Now, what's interesting is that this is the closest thing that Australia has to a viper, and most people would look at this and think it's a viper, but it actually, it's an elapid. I can't tell you how awesome it is to see this little guy. And what's really cool about these guys, they have the fastest strike of any venomous snake. 0.25 seconds, they'll go from ambush to strike back to ambush mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at some captive animals to see how vicious that strike is. After seeing death adders in the wild, I figured it'd be a great opportunity to come to a captive collection to show you just how aggressive the feeding and the amount of venom and vigor they put into pumping it in. So this is a big adult female right here that we're gonna go ahead and feed. And as you can see, in typical death adder fashion, she's just nestled down waiting to ambush. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this fresh mouse here and just pretend like I'm a prey item that's just kind of walking around. And again, typically, when you go in, you can see they're very alert. She's already completely aware that I'm in here. And oftentimes, that little back end will start to lure, which is buried right now. But she's definitely 
fired up. Oh, you can see how lightning quick that was. Again, 0.25 seconds. It went from just sitting there to grabbing that mouse. At this point, it's just holding on, pumping the venom in. The Death Adder, the fifth most venomous snake on the planet. What's the number one cause for the reduction of the population of the Death Adder? If you said C, the cane toad, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Weren't those death adders amazing? And those other animals were to die for as well. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.